Ben is hiding his bong there, right there. <laughs> Was that a bong, Ben? Has anybody else ever used epimorelin or an injectable growth hormone? For any of you who to have your video off, if you turn your video on, then I actually add you to the chat. All right, friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution this is the first time we're doing this. This is uh, like a podcast with uh, friends of freedom that some of which I haven't personally met before. Um, so that's kind of what's interesting and unique. You know, we're, we all um, came here from, let's say, like the Instagram live swipe up. And we're going to talk about whatever and see and just see what happens. Get Basically, I, I want to see what what we can all get excited about, you know, like especially like what I want to research today or what experiment I want to do or, or whatever. But since Aaron came on first, Aaron, how about you? You start us off. What do you want to talk about? Um, well, I was actually just watching a few videos about uh, Ipa Morellen. OK, Ipa Morellen. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. We got clicking. We got clicking background noise here. So. Um, maybe we have to, like, if we're not talking, maybe we mute or something. I'm not sure what's most convenient. And then also, also, um, I see blue confession is on, but it says device not connected. So they need to open up their microphone Cor Cor Corvus not. So anybody who has their, their video on, I can add. So if I see your video and you're on here, then I'll add you. I added Kieran, but he didn't activate his video yet. Uh, so, okay. So I have to just keep checking and, and seeing if someone comes on and if they add their video, then I'll, then they'll add them to them. Okay, Aaron. So let's talk about Ipa Morellen. Do you want to change your life? Well, here's the secret in three words, perfect your chemistry. 95% of people fail at their new year's resolutions. So do you want to be the 5% that doesn't kick off the new year working with me personally to optimize your mental performance, physical performance, and your health. And to sweeten the deal, all signups before January 25th get one year free membership of Enhanced Matrix HQ, the best resource to learn everything about performance enhancement. A day natty is a day wasted, so get enhanced with us this new year. Click the link below to schedule a free consultation with my team and learn more. Go for it. What, yeah, what well, do you think? Um, yeah, I'm training with you and I have it on my protocol and I'm just kind of trying to learn a bit more about it and other other compounds that I can take pretty much all the time I'm interested in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so ibumorelin can be taken all the time because it's got a short half-life. It, it kind of yeah. affects the way the body naturally produces growth hormone. There's really no reason not to take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm looking for sort of most of those things that i can just sort of have like a like a new a new base level of my body with you know xyz compounds and then you know later on i think we're going to look at cycling on and off of a few things but i think i want to find like the things that will sort of give me a good base without any real side effects that i can use long term you know yeah yep epimorelin is one of them on the growth hormone pathway yeah. Um, you, you, uh, you know, what time of day you think you're taking it? Um, so I take that before bed and I yeah, take good MK 677 in the morning. Yeah. Leo and I did this great video about using growth hormone before bed and that applies to epimorelin or growth hormone secretagogues. Also growth hormone is one of the few things that improves REM sleep and deep sleep. A lot of other things improve one or the other at the sacrifice of the other, you know? So like growth hormone before bed, uh, is, is not just for fat loss, muscle building recovery, but also for sleep quality, which improves everything in your life. So I need to start you know, being more religious with my growth hormone at night and or epimorelin as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've set a timer now every day that I take it at the same time about like 930 and my sleep track has shown that my sleep's much better when I'm on that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Anybody else using epimorelin? I'm on AC262 right now. Okay. All right. Junior and Ben are on AC262. Yeah. Uh, have you ever have, has anybody else ever used epimorelin or an injectable growth hormone peptide like uh, GHRP six, GHRP two, tessamorelin and so on? I have not, but I have used, uh, oral MK six, seven, seven, quite a bit. Um, my only downsides with that would be the lethargicness you get from that throughout the day is pretty incredible. So it's tough that you take that in the beginning of the day. That's impressive to me, but, uh, taking that before bed is something that I really enjoyed to improve my REM cycle. 
Yeah, if you take MK677 before bed, does it make you hungry at night or all? Or you sleep through the hunger and just get better sleep? Yeah, it does sometimes. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm absolutely starving. Like I have the munchies from THC is something that I compare it to, but uh, it definitely does increase the hunger, so I have to keep that very low dose before bed. Ben is hiding his bong there, right there. <laughs> Was that a bong, Ben? <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm, maybe, I'm maybe actually in Australia have... and I'm prescribed. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's always the disclaimer. Like, oh, there's there's drugs. Oh, yeah. I have I have a prescription, right? <laughs> no, no. I, I I do actually. I got it like um, a month ago. Yeah. Okay. Sure, you do. For sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should always get prescriptions yeah. for all the stuff that we use for sure. Uh, um, okay. We're adding adding I think, Jake also. Yeah. Tony, I think um something that could be looked into is easily getting a TRT prescription if you're just on Psalms and estrogen. You could easily get a TRT prescription. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because you you want to you lower your natural testosterone level. Come in, say you got low testosterone, yeah. and then they give you a testosterone prescription. Exactly. I had this problem when I first went to get a TRT prescription ages ago at the beginning of this journey, and I had like a testosterone level of, you know, like three hundred and sixty. And they're like, oh, you have to have less. Or maybe it was like, let's say it was like 300. And they're like, oh, you have to have less than 250 to get a prescription. Oh, man. Yeah. So now I have to take D-ball and crash my testosterone and then go back and get a prescription yeah. again. But at least in that one, it was a one-time thing. Some people, some people's doctors are such not such. So I was going to say the uh, a word that gets censored a lot are so strict with it that they make you come back with blood work every month. And then it's really hard to to fake your test levels to get a prescription. That's a real, and then they want to make sure your test levels don't go too high. They keep you like in the mid range instead of letting you go higher. That's terrible, but that's, yeah. that's more rare. These testosterone clinics are opening up now and, and being more flexible. We have a lot of people trying to get in the room, but we filled the room up for any of you who to have your video off. If you turn your video on, then I actually add you to the chat. So like you're, you're listening now, but you don't see your video, but if you add your video, I'll add you in. Tony, what do you think about um, using five milligrams D ball as the test base and then using uh, ACP 105 or Vasculine um, that has a much better binding affinity? D ball has one of the worst binding affinities. So basically, all of the five milligrams of D ball will be converted into methyl estradiol. Um, do you think it would make it less liver toxic as well? Oh, okay. So five milligrams of D ball is very plus low. like 40, 40 milligrams of um of uh ACP one oh five, let's say. And what what is the I don't know the normal dosage of ACP one oh five, like uh like how much like similar to AC two six two, I would say. Um okay. like dosage wise. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, is 40 milligrams of, of this SARM uh enough to saturate the receptors to where the D ball can't bind to the androgen receptors and therefore spills over and uh, gets converted to estrogen without actually attaching the androgen receptor. Uh, pr probably you could fit more than 40 milligrams of a SARM on your androgen receptors. Probably it's not going to mm -hmm. be kicking D ball off the receptor. We do have this problem. Well, it doesn't high dose of testosterone. Well, like, um, I know that Debo, I've heard Anadrol has a worse binding affinity than Debo, but I've heard Debo has, like, one of the worst uh, binding affinities. Um, and Psalms, as you know, have high binding affinities. And uh, ACP-105 isn't liver toxic. And to me, like, that sounds like a good um, source of estrogen if you're, like, on a Psalm-only cycle and you start to run out of uh, natural estrogen. You know, yeah, like this is a this is a good way to get estrogen up, and it doesn't take very much of it. And the low dosage of D ball you can use for this purpose is not really that liver toxic. So yes, yeah, I mean NAC would fix that, right? Yeah. So this strategy like, does work. really need Tudco. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. Valid strategy. Good strategy. Definitely okay. not the kind of thing you see in an old school protocol. Definitely like a new age thing. It doesn't yeah. mean that. Uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means a lot of people just don't know about this approach to it. What do you got there? This is ACP 105 with 100 milliliters of water. Spray on my hair. I use Masteron. Extremely fucked for hair loss, yeah? And I'm extremely prone to hair loss. And this completely prevented, like, I'd say 99%. I probably lost, like, 
a tiny bit of hair, but I was like religiously putting it on. And uh, I strongly recommend it for anyone who wants to go on a gear cycle and has hair loss issues, but wants to use safer compounds that aren't exactly hair safe. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is some, some of us would take SARMs oral and what kind of what I do sometimes too is take like rad 140, for example, is not very androgenic, but very anabolic. And we see in the prostate that it can actually reverse prostate growth and, and reverse prostate disease and bring yeah. the prostate specific antigen down. So it's binding to the DHT receptors, but it's not having the side effects of DHT. And the same thing would make sense for the scalp. Well, um, how come like Brandon Harding, for example, got hair loss on Rad 140? And like um Derek more place more days says that like Rad 140 is definitely not hair safe. Yeah, it's possible. There's diff there's so many different pathways. So one pathway is the DHT receptor, another one is blood pressure, blood flow, you know, anxiety. So Rad 140 can make some people anxious. For some people, it's a good thing. Some people need a little bit of anxiety to get their, you know, their energy and motivation up. But for other people, that can cause a little extra stress on the body, which could result in something like hair loss. So, so that's one possible pathway. Um, but yeah, some people also use Rad 140 and say that they that they don't lose any hair. So this is one of those These things where would have to use finasteride, or well, well, yeah, I mean finasteride with Rad 140 is one way that. Um, like Aaron, you know, Dakota and the group, this is one way we treated his hair loss was rad 140 plus finasteride and it worked really well. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'm about to, in May, uh, yeah, in May, I'm about to go on a trend like cycle where it would be 600 milligrams NPP plus, uh, four milligrams sublingual rad 140 under the tongue, and then probably use like HMG as my estrogen source. And then maybe super draw once a week for 16 weeks, lean bulk. And then um probably uh IGF uh LR3 with metformin. Yeah. Oh solid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, solid. Oh, and another another thing we should use this for, like, is if you have a topic that you want Leo and I to to research or do, then I can start making a list of that. So uh, okay. you guys can all think about what you want to request of of Leo and I, and then like, I'll sit down with him for an hour and I'll go through the yeah. questions and pick ones to do videos on type thing. Um, I think topical, topical Psalms, especially topical ACP 105 and AC 262, I would say those are the most hair safe ones apart from S4, but S4 has the eyesight issue that most people don't want. Um, yeah, like I've had extreme success and I'm extremely prone to hair loss. Like, um, like before I even touched gear, I had to go on finasteride at the age of 20. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. How did you even come up with the idea to go on finasteride at age 20? Cause you had hair loss and then you were researching. I, I was receiving, um, yeah, I was, I had like, um, a whole thing where I was like freaking out. Cause I was like losing my hair at 20. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then all the, all the guys in my family are all bald, like slick bald. So. Yeah. When you took finasteride, did you get any side effects of low DHT? Um, no, no, no. which I, I just got gynecomastia because uh, DHT itself is like masteron where it, it actually like uh, attaches to the breast tissue in some way and it has anti-estrogen effects on the breast tissue. Oh, yeah, I got sure. A bit of gyno. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's this is this is my problem too. I'm gonna get the gyno surgery so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Hey, look, it's straight Cody in the house. Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, and Junior just turned his video on, so I'm gonna add him to the stream. We got a lot of other people in here. Tim, Blue Confession, Corvus, Kieran, Goodfella, Chuck don't have their video on, so that's why I wait to add them to the stream and thus they have their video on. What we're doing, let me tell Cody what we're doing here. I put an Instagram live link up to invite a friends of freedom to come on to just chat about anything and see if we can pique our interest about something, see what's on everybody's yeah, mind. All these people just like clicking on them. There's actually, it can only hold 12 people in the room. And, and it tells me every time there's, there's like 50 people trying to get in right now. Yeah. So I need to increase the capacity of how many people can come on. Yeah. That's really cool. Actually. Yeah. Okay. So we, so we covered so far, uh, Aaron and, and oh, we talked with him about, Epa Morellen, then Ben spraying SARMs on his hair for to grow his hair. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Ben, did that did that help restore hair? 
Did that like, uh, more so just preventing Masseron from destroying my hair, basically. Like a preventing, yeah, because Masseron just like completely rapes hair, basically. So it wasn't and, like a Rogaine solution where like you're, you're like it started growing. You know, um, I would say if you have DHT and you're starting to get hair loss, you will 100% get regrowth, 100%, like no question. And I reckon if you use uh, a natural test booster, you can literally like not be shut down and use this as, and in my opinion it's less side effects than finasteride because finasteride some guys can get uh low dht symptoms with their penis and like their feeling in their penis personally i don't have that but i know that's a thing um, yeah i haven't yeah. i haven't tried the finasteride i've tried the rogaine though mainly on the beard and it did crazy wonders for the beard um, i have tried that but i i didn't I get like, that good of results i did a little bit on the, on the hair and stuff and you know it's, yeah worked here and there well, i personally i think this is better than rogaine personally because rogaine to me doesn't address the actual core issue of hair loss which is androgenic um hair loss yeah right. whereas this actually addresses it at its core issue yeah so bet for you no he put in sarms in the this is uh acp 105 um yeah. 100 milligrams with 100 um milliliters of water was your hair hairline receding before or just thin? Um, yeah, so I was on finasteride before I touched gear, and then I went on dutasteride. I got even better results on dutasteride, and then I went jumped to TRT, and then I was also mixing in a bit of anavar, and then I realized I was starting to get back to what I was like before I even touched finasteride, and I was like, fuck, what do I do? And then I started researching more on like more plates, more dates. And I was really looking into S4 at the time. And I was starting to spray S4. I, I originally was taking S4 orally. Um, and then I realized like it's under 500 Daltons because I watched a more place, more dates video um, showing that you can put on your head. And then I started doing that. And then I could basically use uh, Anadrol. I could use Anavar. I could use all the non hearsay shit and not get hair loss. And to me, that was like an absolute game changer. And I think it's something that people need to actually be aware of that because like a lot of guys will just use tests only be allowed to use like nandrolone or test only if they care about their hair and they have hair loss and they aren't allowed to use like primo or masteron even though they're safe they aren't allowed to use it because it's not hair safe and Dude, like that's, in my that's opinion what mean to, uh, that's what got me into ty and clark was like the i wanted to prevent hair loss like it was deca right so or d ball deca or d ball but that do, mm. before, like before you touch gear at all, did you you had hair loss like even before? Yeah, yeah, I was on dutasteride. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, you like your hair looks pretty good now. Even your hairline, like it looks thick, yeah. and you you don't have a receded hairline. Like do that's you, pretty. Do you have a, oh, I I could send you a photo of what it looks like. Um, yeah, if you could send before so photos, like, that would be really. Yeah, cool. yeah, I have a before photo. I'll try and show it on the camera. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. If this uh, yeah, oh, sort of is like down I if can do screen so. share too. Yeah. Cause man, I want to. Yeah, I want. I, I, I wonder what else you could add. Just, just okay. Hairspray. That's like wait. Like turn up. You could add are you to the hairspray? Yeah. And uh, I bit. actually think it's better than are you for several reasons. Because right. are you has a worse finding affinity than Psalms number one, and are you is is. Uh, occupies the androgen receptor without while having zero anabolism whereas this is anabolic so this would equal more muscle and it has a stronger binding affinity than are you yeah. yeah so in my opinion it just seems to be better than are in general you could put a little bit of dutasteride in there too i say dutasteride because i think to topically dutasteride works better than finasteride but I uh, would make things about dutasteride, topical dutasteride, because if you actually look at the Dalton number, it's above 500. But then also, people have said that it actually works when you use it. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah dutasteride is yeah. less likely to go systemic because of, because of its molar mass, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But, but it's interesting. The hand, I've heard good anecdotal stories from it. So right. It's interesting yeah. though because you're using an anabolic to grow your hair, but typically anabolics are associated with hair loss yes. in itself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, which I'm trying to wrap my head around. That's what my line used to be at its at its worst. Uh, before I told oh, this is yeah. before I was, like 
a year before gear. This was a year before gear. This was my natural oh. testosterone. You're pretty thin and kind genetics. of genetics. Yeah. He had the hair loss. And, now, and every guy in my family is slick bald. As well. Every guy yeah. in your family's bald? Yeah. Oh, wow. And I started losing it at 20, at the age of 20. So he's totally pioneering human evolution. Yeah. Can you experiment yeah, really on did. your family like, members? Is... Can... Let's see if all oh, your yeah, family my... members can okay, okay. grow their hair. So my brother is 17, and he started putting uh, ACP 105 on his head. And just his, like, natural DHT levels was causing hair loss at the age of 17. Like, he started getting regrowth from ACP 105. Like, yeah. And we began blood work with him. His test levels are good and, and, and everything. So, yeah. Wow. Like, I genuinely think, like... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the story real quick. There's too many people. There's like hundreds of people trying to get in, and uh, it's I don't want them to get frustrated. There we go. All right, all right, okay, cool, Ben. All right, so how about who else has something uh, interesting to to say there? I'm curious about Junior because Junior's got like this gaming headphones, gaming chair. Are you a gamer? Yeah, something like that, Tony. How's it going? <laughs> what do What do you take for your brain for gaming? Uh, I haven't messed around with any nootropics, uh, nootropics at all. Um, I want to talk to you about AC262. Okay. Let's hear about, let's hear AC262. What do you think? Yeah. So I started that and then just like the muscle fullness within like two hours, like took it and then worked out like two to three hours later. And the muscle fullness was like insane. Um, what kind of things did you experience on 262? Yeah. So we first, the first experiments, actually a long, long time ago, we had people take it at a really low dosage, like 10 milligrams. And I didn't notice too much for, of it. I wasn't super excited about it. We had so many other SARMs at the time, like LGD and S23 that were so powerful. We didn't really need to add a, a new SARM just for novelty. Um, but later when I circled back to it again and I said, well, let's try what SARMs work with bodybuilders already on cycle instead of adding more steroids. And that's what I started experimenting with it heavier. So like my first detailed experiments isolated, you know, like, like uh, isolating the variables were on bodybuilders on cycle. And it was like, instead of adding another steroid, we add AC262 at 30 milligrams. And all of them said that they looked and felt like they were something similar to trend below on just 30 milligrams. Uh, but they all, most people exper experience some increased aggression from it on 30 milligrams. So then I started playing around with the dosages and found like 20 milligrams was such a nice sweet spot for most people. I mean, yeah, if, if, I, if I have a bodybuilder who's on gear and they want to definitely feel it, then okay, 30 milligrams or more, then there's no question they're going to feel it. But if it's someone who's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to take the risk and I don't want them to feel like anxiety uh, and I don't want to crash their testosterone levels, then a lower dosage. But I was also surprised when I did blood work on it later on natties, we did blood work before and after AC262 at 10 milligrams and 20 milligrams, and I didn't see some testosterone suppression. But um, as Aaron is in the Train With Tony program, so uh, I don't know if he was on this call, but we had um, one of, one of the, the guys in the group was on RAD 140 and AC 262, and his testosterone, natural testosterone, dropped in half. So in his case, I don't know which one it was, but neither are super suppressive. In his case, uh, he was suppressed from it, and he was experiencing some symptoms of, of low testosterone. We put him on HCG, and that brought his natural testosterone back with no symptoms of low testosterone, plus the benefit of of this arm. So that's, those are the things that come to mind. Uh, when I think it, I throw in AC 262, probably more than any other AC 262 and rad 140 are the arms that I use the most these days. I want to know why, why you like AC 262 over other arms. I want to know why junior chose AC 262, like yeah. out of anything, like why did you choose that one? Yeah. Junior, what made you choose it? Just no real, like, uh, not a lot of people have talked about taking it at all. You know, online, you really look at like you're you're the only guy doing this right now. <laughs> you're like the opposite of most. Most people yeah. want to take something that more people have taken. They feel more comfortable with. Yeah. You're like, oh, nobody's taken this before. This is risky. <laughs> <It's the same> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You too. Totally. In my opinion, I feel like um, Rad 140 is kind of like in a completely different ball game than AC 262 and ACP 105. In my opinion, um, the reason I say that is because just the amount of anecdotes I've seen online and um, 
just watching more plays, more days and stuff like that. I honestly see by 140 more so as like gear, like honestly, like where half a milligram of Rad140 will fully shut down your LH from, at least Russo says that as well. Uh, whereas it seems like 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams of AC262 or ACP105, on top of having zero hair loss issues, uh, don't fully shut down the LH and FSH um, production. And um, it, I, I think it has to do with the fact that they're partially partial agonist psalms. So there's three partial agonist psalms that I know of right now, which is S4 Andrew, which has the obvious issue of uh, eyesight issues, whereas the other two, ACP105 and AC262, I think those are the next game changes in bodybuilding and also in longevity as well for people over the age of 50. I really think those two psalms are the game changes that we're going to see in the next coming years. Yeah. Why do you think it's a game changer? Like, you think it's important that it's less suppressive so people don't have to take TRT with it? Is that the idea? Yeah, so they can take a natural test booster like um, Greg Doucette's G-Test, Sigma, or Ox. You got the Ox one, and um, you, got, you sell natural test boosters. And I think that should be enough to have zero suppression, like literally zero, maybe even more, because Psalm's lower SHBG, which means that you're going to have more free tests. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important point is people usually just measure their total test and then like, oh, my test is low, but I feel great. Mm. And that's because their SHB. total test doesn't really matter. Their, what matters is their free test. Yeah, people need to I will say though, I will say though, um, the thing about low SHBG is that if you aren't using something like South, South, South Palmetto or Finasteride or Dutasteride, you're going to have a lot more free DHT than free testosterone. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, DHT binds more to SHBG than testosterone. Yeah, there's so much talk about dutasteride, finasteride. Everybody forgot about sal palmetto. I mean, sal palmetto is is really effective. It's and, effective. Yeah, and, actually, yes. Yeah. You're not trying to crash. We're not it's trying like to. Natty. Yeah, we don't use, usually get DHT to zero because then we have DHT side effects. We just want to lower DHT, and sal palmetto does that. So it's it's like it's actually safer for most people to just use sal palmetto because then they're not going to worry about actually crashing it too low. Is there any research that shows that it would reduce the size of the prostate, sal palmetto, on its own? Um, I think that's. I'm sure it would, just by the nature of what it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that'd be interesting to know because if it does, like if it even if it reduces it by like twenty percent or something, then then we know it's effective, right? Yeah, and if it's effective at on the prostate, then it's highly likely effective on the hair follicle. It's exactly. Yeah. I yeah. I will say that I find so the connection between the growing of the prostate and uh, how androgenic it is versus hairline. I would say, oh, the more you recede, the more your prostate is going to grow, the more androgenic it is. The only thing that's stopping me from fully making that statement is two compounds. It's Rad 140 and it's Superdrol. Because apparently Superdrol seems extremely androgenic as a compound. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it's actually one of the best uh, compounds in, in the DHT compounds for hair loss, which is interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then Rad 140 doesn't grow prostate that much but it seems quite androgenic by the feeling it gives you strength like strength is generally connected to andro androgenicity of a compound as well yeah so mm. i did just do a quick search for studies on salt palmetto for for lowering psa which would be an easy way to tell if it's um blocking the effects of dht on on the prostate and yeah there's obviously a lot of studies on it i mean i assume that there were but just to verify yes there are right yeah okay so more saw palmetto then yeah would you take up is that something you might incorporate um i mean the thing is like i don't really notice any like issues with my prostate but is that something that you would you would just know like you would probably have a difficult time urinating right that's kind of yeah the, if you want if you want to see what it feels like to have a perfect prostate you can take doxazosin it'll relax your prostate and then you'll be like if you have a better orgasm and you can pee better and just everything works better you're like oh maybe my prostate was a little swollen and i didn't even know it because i didn't have anything to compare it to so oh. i have some so i give it to you remind me okay yeah. Tony. Something that I can um, uh, like say about this is that 
when I was on my gear cycle with Masteron, which is obviously not good for the prostate, right? I was also like on Anabar and Anadrol, um, like in like pre-workout sublingual. Um, that's when I had to pee really frequently because my my prostate was obviously big and it was going against my bladder. Um, and now that I'm literally just taking AC two six two and occasionally having shots of tests as a source of estrogen. Um, and now like I can tell my prostate is like way smaller. Number one, because I'm regaining hair back from the cycle, even though I was spraying shit on my hair. And um, yeah, I'm peeing so infrequently now. But when I do pee, it's like a lot of pee, but it's I, I prefer obviously peeing less frequently. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the peeing frequently could also be um, like blood sugar issues as well. Like yeah. if you're really, really high calories, you get you get a bit of like pre-diabetes going, right? Insulin response. I was on berberine because I did do MK677 as well, but yeah. Okay.